This is the third part of Chapter 3 for Standard 8, Force and Pressure. If you haven't watched the first two parts, please click on the link in the description box below. Hey, this video was made just for you. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. So let's continue with our chapter. Always remember, the tendency of an object to remain in its existing state is called its inertia. So this is basically the same definition of inertia that we learned earlier, in which whatever state the object is in, it will continue to remain in that state for a certain amount of time. So this existing state could be if the body is in motion or if it's at rest. This is why an object in stationary state, that is, when the state of the body is at rest, remains in the same state and an object in motion, that is, it keeps on moving, remains in the state of motion in the absence of an external force. So this means that whatever body, if it is in motion, it will continue to be in motion, that is, it will continue to keep moving until and unless an external force is applied. And if the body is at rest, it will continue to remain at rest unless and until an external force is applied. For example, if you take a piece of paper and you keep it on the table, it will remain there unless and until an external force is applied. And this external force could be if you pick it up. Or if you take a ball and you throw it on the table, it will continue to keep moving until an external force is applied, so until you stop it with your hand or if a frictional force comes upon it. There are types of inertia. There is inertia of the state of rest, inertia of motion and directional inertia. So these are the three types of inertia and they basically tell us of the different existing states of motion of the body. So if the body is at rest initially, then it will have inertia of the state of rest. If it is in motion, it will have inertia of motion. So let us see all these three types of inertias. The first one is inertia of state of rest. An object in the state of rest cannot change its state of rest due to its inherent property. This property is called the inertia of state of rest. So this is the example of the paper kept on the table. That once you keep an object on the table, it will not move until and unless you put the pressure or an external force is applied and that is causing it to move. Until and unless an external force is applied, it will not move and it will stay in the same place. Next one is inertia of motion. The inherent property of an object due to which its state of motion cannot change is called its inertia of motion. This is the example of the ball. When you roll a ball on the table, it will continue to keep on rolling until and unless you stop it with your hand or if frictional force acts on it and causes it to stop. So until and unless an external force is acting, it will continue to be in motion. And this is inertia of motion. Another example given here is of a revolving electric fan, which continues to revolve even after it is switched off. So, if you must have noticed the fan in your room or classroom, once you switch off, the blades of the fan keep on rotating for a certain amount of time and slowly it will decrease its speed and finally come to the rest. So why does this happen? Because as soon as you switch off the switch of the fan, there is no electricity supplying it. So it should stop immediately. But this does not happen because the blades of the fan are in inertia of motion. Therefore, they will continue to revolve for a certain amount of time and finally come to a rest. Passengers sitting in the running bus get a jerk in the forward direction if the bus suddenly stops. And this we all must have noticed when we are sitting in a bus or car. If the bus or car suddenly stops when it is moving, then our body and our head is moved in the forward direction. That is, we get a jerk because our body was in the inertia of motion because of the bus or the car we were sitting in. And therefore, when the bus comes to a rest suddenly, our body, because it is in the inertia of motion, will be jerked in the forward direction. The third type of inertia is directional inertia. So what is this? This inherent property of an object due to which the object cannot change the direction of its motion is called directional inertia. 
so if you take the example of the ball when you roll it on the table it will continue to roll in the direction that you threw it that is it will move in a straight line unless and until you push it from the side that will cause it to change the direction so until an external force is applied on the ball it will not change its direction let's see the example given here for example if a vehicle in motion along a straight line suddenly turns the passengers sitting in it are thrown opposite to the direction of the turning so if you are sitting in the car and it is moving in a straight line and suddenly the driver takes a very steep turn then you must have noticed when you are sitting in the back seat if the driver takes a left turn your body will move to the right side so you get a jerk on the opposite direction as the turn taken by the driver so this is directional inertia because when we when the turn is taking place our body is in a directional inertia that is because we were going in the straight direction because of the sudden turn our body is pushed towards the opposite direction activity 3 take some sharp pointed nails and push them into a wooden plank by hammering on their heads so let us take this as the wooden plank and these are the nails that are commonly used by carpenters so in this nail you have this portion that is called the head of the nail and we have this pointed portion so if you keep the pointed portion towards the plank and you hammer on their head then the nail will easily go into the plank now take a nail and hold it with its head on the plank and hammer it down from the pointed end now if you keep it in the opposite direction where the head of the nail is towards the plank and the pointed edge is upwards and you hammer on the pointed nail you will observe that this nail now does not go easily into the plank and sometimes even this pointed nail may get bent when pressing the drawing pins into a drawing board they get into the board easily by applying a force using the thumb one can push the pins into the board So now you must have noticed similar to these pins you also get drawing pins which are similar looking to these nails but these drawing pins are used to for drawing boards and not hard wooden planks so those drawing pins when you easily push your force with using your thumb only the drawing pins go easily into the board just by applying the force of the thumb on the contrary while pressing ordinary pins with the thumb the thumb may get hurt So even though you use the thumb with the drawing pins if you use your thumb to put these nails into the wooden plank you will not be able to do that no matter the amount of force you use and you may even hurt your thumb by trying this so what do we realize by this activity is that it is easier to push the pin inside the plank or the drawing board if the pointed edge is towards the plank and also the thickness of this plank and the how hard it is depends on the amount of force required so that is why we were able to push the drawing pin with just our thumb but for putting these nails into the wooden plank we need to hammer it down using a hammer use your brain power it is easy to cut vegetables and fruits with a sharp knife a blunt knife does not work here A blunt knife is a knife which was earlier sharp but is not sharp anymore because of repetitive use. So you must have observed when you cut your vegetables and fruits a sharp knife works better and you can cut it more smoothly when you use a sharp knife whereas when you use a blunt knife you have to put more force in cutting the fruits or vegetables. So why does this happen? It is because the sharp knife has a thinner edge and therefore we use lesser amount of pressure to cut it but is let's explain this phenomena using physics the force exerted perpendicularly on a unit area is called pressure so this is the definition of pressure in which it is nothing but the force exerted perpendicularly on a unit area and we use that same pressure while cutting fruits and vegetables also because we place the knife at a perpendicular angle to the surface of the fruits and vegetables so pressure is equal to force upon the area on which the force is applied So this is a very important formula and it tells us the factors that pressure depends on. 
it depends on the force applied and it also depends on the area on which the force is applied and since area is in the denominator's position for a constant force pressure is inversely proportional to area so lesser the area more the pressure therefore for a given amount of force lesser area will produce more pressure therefore a sharp knife was working better than the blunt knife because the sharp knife has a thinner edge and therefore the area is also decreased because the area is less for the same amount of force we are getting more pressure and therefore it becomes easier to cut fruits and vegetables Presently we are considering only the force acting on an area in a direction perpendicular to it so whenever you take into consideration about pressure we have to consider the force that is acting perpendicular to it the unit of pressure si unit of force is newton and the area is measured in meter square so these are the si units for force and area which is newton and meter square and because pressure is force upon area therefore the si unit of pressure would be newton upon meter square and this newton upon meter square is also known as pascal in atmospheric science the unit of pressure is bar and we take one bar is equal to 10 raised to 5 pascal so because usually pressure is very high that is why we take a unit called as bar and we get this bar by taking one bar is equal to 10 raised to 5 pascal and pressure is a scalar quantity how do we come to know this since we know that there are two types of quantity scalar and vector so the scalar scalar and vector both depend on the amount that is the magnitude of force applied but vector quantities additionally depend on the direction of motion as well but we know that all the direction for pressure is taken perpendicularly therefore there is no directional component when we take into account pressure therefore it is just a scalar quantity that only depends on the magnitude of pressure if area increases pressure reduces for the same force and if the area decreases the pressure increases for the same force so we have seen this earlier when we take this formula for a given amount of force that is when the force is constant since pressure and area are inversely proportional therefore a lesser amount of area will give you a more pressure whereas a more area will give you lesser pressure For example, due to natural adaptation, the bottom surface of camel's feet are broad. So natural adaptation is when the body of an animal changes over time due to the changes in the environment. So we have observed that the camel's feet have become very broad. Hence the camel's weight is exerted on a large area and the pressure on the sand is reduced. So because camels live in the desert, and because they have to walk on sand a lot therefore their feet have become broad so that the entire weight of the camel can be distributed equally on the broad feet and the pressure on the sand will be less that is why camel's feet do not penetrate into the sand and it becomes easy to walk so when we walk on sand our feet goes inside the sand and it becomes difficult to walk but since camel's feet are broad they have a very large area to so that their weight is distributed equally because from this formula we have seen that if the area would be larger the pressure would be less so therefore because of the less pressure the weight exerted would is equally distributed and the because of the less pressure the feet do not penetrate into the sand like how it does for us therefore camel can easily walk on the sand pressure on solids air pressure is exerted on all the objects kept in air so because we are living in the earth's environment our environment has air all around us therefore no matter where we are we always have air pressure that is exerted on all the objects that are present in the earth's atmosphere when a weight is kept on a solid pressure is exerted on it so for example let us take this red box 
and on top of the red box we will keep a blue cube so the weight of this blue cube will be exerting pressure on the red box this pressure depends on the value of the weight and the contact area between the two so the pressure exerted by the cube on the box would be dependent on two things one would be the weight of the cube and the second would be the contact area that is how much area of the box is covered by the cube so both of these things will tell us the pressure exerted by the cube on the box for the answers to this exercise and other free worksheets please go to jkacademypro.com this was the end of part 3 for the part 4 video please click on the link in the description box below